this is the lecture series of real time operating systems we are going to discuss about message queues in this video we will be discussing about uh, the basic uh, introduction about message queue uh, the various uh, features of message queue and also the process state diagram there is a state diagram of a message queue and also we will be discussing what are the various types of communications and data transfer possible with the help of message queues okay if you are seeing the channel for the first time please do subscribe to the channel for subject videos and recruitment updates also follow us on our instagram page so let's just move on to the video we are going to discuss about message queue now this message queue is actually a buffer like object through which the task and isr can send and receive messages okay so the name is actually indicating that it is a message queue so in order to uh, send and receive messages this message queue act as a buffer like object now why it is called a buffer like object because so there will be a sending task and there will be a receiving task the sending task will be putting the message into the message queue and uh, when the message is in the message queue there is actually an isolation between sending task and receiving task so there is a uh, so this message queue is acting as a buffer so it has a intermediate uh, storage of the message and after a particular time it will be passing that message to the receiving task okay so all these things we'll be discussing uh, while seeing the structure okay so a message queue is like a pipeline so it temporarily holds the message from the center until the intended receiver is ready to read it so this thing just i have explained now so the sender is actually going to uh, put the message in the message queue now for a particular period of time the message queue will be actually holding the message and when the receiver is ready to receive the message only at that time the message is given to the receiver end so in in between there is a buffering time and in that buffering time the message will be in the message queue only okay so there is a temporary uh, buffering that decouples the sending and receiving task okay anyway there is a temporary decoupling happening between the sending and receiving task and uh, for that the message queue will be acting okay so message queue will be performing this decoupling so uh, when the message is in the message queue there is actually it is a buffering time and in that time the message is in the message queue and it is not with the sending task or with the receiving task okay next let us see the structure of message queues so these are the various sending task waiting list so this various task here in this waiting list are ready to send message to the message queue or they are waiting to send some messages into the message queue so this is the message queue and this is receiving task waiting list so these tasks are waiting to receive the messages from the message queue now if you examine this message queue every uh, section of this message queue is actually a message okay or you can call them as queue message queue element so this will be various messages so here if you examine the message or the data that is present inside the message queue is in a structured format they are seen as messages okay not unstructured format they are present in a structured format an entire message will be uh, put as a single element just like that the data is getting stored to the message queue there is a uh, there is two ends actually present in the message queue which is head and tail so the head is the portion from where the message is being given to the receiving task or the message reading is performed from the head in the tail end the messages are being put this is the normal case the reverse is also possible we'll see that later okay so the normal case is there is a head there is a tail normally the message is re uh, read from the head end messages are being put to the tail end okay and also there will be a name or id for this message queue now the message queue will be having a control block where all the parameters of this message queue will be stored so while discussing the process uh, there also we have uh, discussed about a process control block here also there is a message queue control block okay next the memory there is a uh, what in which memory the message is actually getting stored in the message queue it can be in system pool or private buffers okay so on to which memory 
this message queue data is getting stored it can be to a system pool or to private buffers okay so these are the various parameters associated with the message queue and for every message queue there is a total message queue length and also for every message while designing the message queue the designer will be fixing a message length okay so these are the various parameters next let us discuss about the state diagram of a message queue here you can see initially there is no messages in the message queue and it is in which state it is in the empty state now uh, when the uh, sending task when they will start send uh, start the process of sending messages to the message queue now it is not uh, in the empty state anymore it will move from empty state to the not empty state and here in the not empty state message arrival and message delivery both are happening see this uh, this diagram here messages are coming and messages are also being removed so messages are delivered and messages are arriving both this process is happening in the non empty state now when uh, message the number of messages is equal to queue length then it will move to the full state now consider that uh, here the message has been uh, there is a sending task has uh, has put messages till the queue length means maximum number of messages are now present in the message queue means it will be in which state it will be in the full state means no more messages can be added to the queue okay again from the full state if one message is getting delivered means it will again move from the full state to the not empty state and when all the messages are removed from the not empty state it will move to the empty state okay so very simple explanation this is just like we are going to uh, put something uh, in a bag first there is uh, there is no uh, element or there is nothing present in the bag so it is in the empty state then we start putting uh, anything to the bag like something if we are going to put inside or fill in the bag it will be in the not empty state consider that uh, with one hand we are putting in uh, one hand we are taking out things so it is in the not empty state so when we are removing all the elements or all the things which we have put it will be uh, moving to the empty state again now if you are filling the things to the full uh, size of the bag means it will be in which state full state so this is a very basic explanation of the working of a message queue okay next let us see about how the memory uh, there is how memory copying is happening so we know that the message is actually initially present with the sending task right so there is a copy of the message present in the sending task memory area so for every uh, element that is for the sending task for the receiving task and also for the message queue there is a memory right so initially the message is present with the sending task that is it is in the memory of the sending task now in order to send uh, the data to the uh, message queue it will have to form a first copy the first copy will be given to the message queue and that will be getting stored to the memory area of the message queue now from this memory area after a particular time that is after the buffering time the message will be then copied that is the second copy is given to the receiving task and then it will be present in the receiving task memory area so this is how the memory copying is happening okay next sending message to a message queue now that is we are going to see how can we add messages to a message queue in which all ways it can be in the first in first out way means here this is the head this is the tail end so here we are going to add the messages to the tail end just like the normal case see here here we have seen this is the head this is the tail we are adding messages to the tail so that is the normal way which is the first in first out way here we are going to add the messages to the tail end but there is another way also which is last in first out means directly we are going to substitute the message or we are going to put the message to the head portion now this is a special case consider that the message that we are going to send is a high priority message in this case the message has to be immediately given to the receiving task so in this case we cannot put in the uh, tail area we have to directly put in the head area okay 
Next, let us see about the task waiting. So here, the tasks are waiting in the waiting list to send data to the message queue. That can be also in the two ways. It can be in the first in first out. Means the first task which is entering this waiting list will be first putting the message to the message queue. See here, the newly com uh, coming task will be inserted to the tail. That is uh, to the end of the waiting list. This is not a message queue. This is the waiting list. Okay. That is towards the end of the waiting list. We are going to put the newly coming task. But here if it is a priority based uh, like if it is, uh, if the task waiting list is arranged in the priority based order, if a pri high priority task is coming means directly it will be uh, put in the, in the beginning of the sending task waiting list. Okay, so these are the waiting list. Here the tasks are waiting to uh, substitute or to put the message to the message queue. Okay, so there can be uh, two orders, first in first out order or priority based order. So here the tasks are waiting to put the message to the message queue. Okay. So it can be in the first in first out order or it can be based on the priority order. If a high priority task is coming directly it will move to the to the beginning of the waiting list. Next let us see some operations that we perform with message queues. First one is create. In order to create a message queue we can use this operation. Delete. In order to delete the message queue we use this operation. Next sending receiving messages. Sending means uh, if a task want to send message to the message queue, we can use an operation called send. And also the other thing which is receiving, receiving of a message from message queue. Broadcast, it is also possible. Broadcasting of messages to multiple tasks with the help of message queue. That is also possible. So we will study all these things while uh, uh, discussing about various types of data transfers possible with the help of message queue. Now. Before that, let us discuss about the two ways of reading from a message queue. Consider that a task is going to read data from the message queue. It can be in two ways. It can be either a destructive read or a non-destructive read. Destructive read means if a task is performing destructive read, if it is reading the if it is reading the message from the message queue, it will be taking that message from the message queue and the copy of the message won't be present in the message queue anymore. Okay, so it is a destructive reading. Non-destructive means uh, even if the, the task is reading the message from the message queue, a copy of the message will be still present in the queue for some time. So it is non-destructive. Even though the reading is performed, the content is still present in that queue. Okay, so these are the two ways of reading. Next, let us discuss about the various methods of data transfers that is data communication possible with the help of message queues. Next we are going to discuss about the various uh, methods of data communication which is possible with the help of message queues. First one is non-interlocked one-way communication. Here there is only a one-way communication happening. There is a source task, there is a sync task. Source task is always sending the data to the message queue. And sync task is always receiving the data from the message queue. There is no other uh, way of acknowledgement or authentication happening um, between these two tasks. Okay. So just one task is sending, only one task is receiving. So this is a uh, completely one way communication and it is non interlocked. Next one is interlocked one way communication. Here also, there is one task which is always sending and a, another task which is always receiving. But in between these two tasks, there is a synchronization or an interlocking happening with the help of a semaphore. Okay, so there is a binary semaphore used here, and with the help of this uh, binary semaphore, B is indicating a binary semaphore. Okay, with the help of the binary semaphore, there is a synchronization happening uh, between the source and the sync task. Now, what happens here is the source task will put a message to the message queue and it will acquire the binary semaphore. Sync task will receive the data from the message queue and it will release the semaphore. Now, after uh, putting the, uh, the message into the message queue, the source task will go to sleep. And when uh, this binary semaphore is free, this uh, free binary semaphore again wakes up the source task and then it will again 
put another message okay so whenever the binary semaphore is uh, in the released state the source task will send the data and acquire it now this sync task will be the one which is releasing this semaphore okay so uh, once again i'll try to explain first the source task will put our data to the message queue and it will the source task will acquire the semaphore sync task will receive the message and release the semaphore when the semaphore is in released state again the source task put another message again acquire the semaphore so this uh, so like this there is a synchronization also data transfer and synchronization is also there so uh, whatever we have explained here uh, actually it is written here okay so this is how the uh, data communication is happening now the code snippet or the pseudo code of this interlocked one-way communication is like this source task send the message to message queue acquire the binary semaphore sync task receive the message from the message queue give or release the binary semaphore very simple right next one interlock two-way data communication here there are two message queues one task send the data to the message queue and the server task receive it and the acknowledgement is uh, being sent to the client task through this message queue okay so let us see the pseudo code you will get a very clear idea t client task what it is doing is send a message to the request queue and wait for message from the server server task it will receive the message from the request queue and send a message to the client queue here you can see this is the this is the message queue that is this is the request queue this is the request queue see client task will send a message to the request queue this is a the upper one is a request queue and the server task will receive the message and it will give the acknowledgement through this bottom message queue to the client so two way communication is happening through this path and this path also communication is happening next one is a broadcast communication here only one message queue is present but more than one task will be receiving the same message so this is a broadcast task in order to broadcast a message it will send that to a message queue the message queue will be broadcasting that same message to all the sync task let us see the pseudo code t broadcast task send a broadcast message to queue T signal task receive the message on the queue. Now this is similar for signal task 1, 2 and 3. Here you can see there are uh, sync task or signal task. Actually there is a small uh, change in the name. These are signal task. Okay. Signal task 1, 2 and 3. Both are receiving the same messages. Okay. Receive the message on the queue and the same message is received. Since it is a broadcast way of data transfer, same message is received. So that's all about message queues. We have actually covered all the details from the message queue area. We have seen the introduction. We have seen the structure. We have seen the how memory is being copied. The state diagram. Uh, that is a message queue state diagram. Also, we have seen about various methods of communication and the operations. So, all topics associated with the message queue we have covered in this video. So, this is actually a quick revision video of message queues. Uh, and also very simple explanation I've tried to give. Uh, and if you're going to write your examinations, focus more on the figures or the diagrams. Try to write less as theory because diagrams, if you're drawing, you'll get more mark. Okay. And also if you're preparing for some interviews, be clear with all the concepts. Try to understand because the topic is very simple actually. So try to understand and study. So that will be very useful for you. Okay. So that's all about this video. I'm really hoping that you found the video useful. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up. Also share this video with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.